when you were at your peak of coaching and involvement with USA Hockey and name it, Minnesota yeah. Hockey, were you able to still photograph and do things you loved outside, or did you get more involved later? Yeah, the um, that's a great question. So, um, no, I mean, the financial advisory is what my business has been since 1977. Um, and that's paid that pays the bills um and i you know but it's also it's a form of coaching it's all the same i mean we're ma helping people manage not only their money but more importantly their behavior w around money and um it works sometimes and some people make a lot of bad decisions and so it's we try to help them avoid that so to answer your question, Wally, is yeah, uh, the other hobbies came uh, as my my advisory business grew to a certain size where it was pretty good, pretty big, and then I was also managing an office for RBC actually, uh, RBC Wealth Management, Royal Bank of Canada, um, in the Twin Cities here. So I always thought two paychecks were better than one, but it took, you know, took all my time until during the day. And so hockey was at night, but Wally, I decided in 1980, I don't know, three or four, I was coaching in the USHL. We had a team here in town and I had a couple, uh, players that were rostered while, while they still played high school uh, from Edina, Minnesota. And they were good good players. And we had them rostered to play, I think they call it now, as, as, as an affiliate player. So they would come and play after their high school season was over. And um, so you're holding a spot for them. And they, when their season was over, and I called them and they were, they'd gone to Florida for a couple of weeks. <laughs> gone on spring break, you know, and didn't bother to call nobody, you know, whatever. And they never showed up. And I thought, you know, I, I can't make my living based on the whims of 18 year old kids. And um, it wasn't a living then. I was, when I coached that team, the United States Hockey League, I was paid $5,000 and I had a car. They, they leased a car for me. And um, oh, that wasn't even that team. That was the team before that. Yeah, it paid me about five grand to coach that team. And it's like, you can't make a living doing it. And the guys that were making a living in the early 80s were getting paid like $30,000. Um, now they make 130, but in r relative terms, that's still not very much money to, to live as a hockey coach. So I chose hockey as my avocation and financial advisory as my vocation. And they work pretty well together because I have a ton of flexibility in terms of like, I haven't really done much this morning, but I've got a four o'clock meeting this afternoon with it, with new clients and, um, and, that, and that'll be good. So I have the flexibility of doing it. I also hired my daughter about six, seven years ago to work with me. So she does all, um, she does most of day-to-day -day work, and we have an administrative person also that works with us. So it, it's a if you if you can make that business work, and it's hard because getting clients is very very difficult uh, these days. Um, you know, it's a, it's a it's a great lifestyle, and and you're doing good things for people, really doing good stuff for them. So. Uh, but hockey, I, I'm a hockey player. I always have been, and I always will be. Because <laughs> everything you learn in hockey, you can use it in the rest of your life. So. Uh, now, I, one thing you've said before I go to Peter, whether you're coaching or working in finance, you can do good things for people. Yeah. I think that's what drives us. Yeah. Everything we've done, whether it's horticulture, whether it's teaching, 
yeah. financial advising. In coaching, it was more evident for me. The satisfaction was more immediate. And, and you know, the in commitment and engagement of the student or player, the client, yeah. was off the chart compared to a classroom. And oh, for second. sure. So coaching does, uh, and to use the, the word coaching in financial management and doing good for people, I mean, that's leadership in a nutshell. Oh. It isn't the dollar sign at the end, which will look after itself if you right. do things right. Just like think, winning will yeah. look at itself in the end if you do things it's right. Really the the investment side of the business is is the easiest part, yeah. um, and it, but it's the it's the relation side, the relationship side of the business, and you know I'm I'm always astounded. I, I mean, I, you know, I had, a, I had a client for a few years, and you know, he's worth five, six, seven hundred million dollars, and he had he didn't have an estate plan. He didn't have he, he did he had nothing that he should have had in in place in case something happened to him because he didn't think about it. And, um, and, and the nature of it, he was also, he was a, uh, not a venture cow, he was a hedge fund guy. But people get so busy that they don't really take the time to understand how to deal with their personal finances and their lives and tax management when their lives kind of come to the end. And, um, so we say we're financial advisors, but we're really uh, like family CFOs, family coaches for families. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's rewarding, but it can be really frustrating too, because people make, they make bad decisions and then they don't tell you about it and whatever, but it, you do the best you can, right? They don't, they don't always go to the middle and take the best shot. 